Is your GPU running a lot hotter and noisier than you would like it to? Today, I'm going to tell you about three different ways from air cooling, liquid cooling, to even hybrid cooling that you could actually greatly improve your temperatures. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Some say every time you smash that like button, your GPU temperature goes down by as much as one degree Celsius. All right, so the topic for today is getting these GPU temperatures under control. Now, this is gonna apply pretty much to all generation GPUs, especially more modern GPUs. Of course, even more specifically, if you have a newer GPU, like a RTX 3000 or one of the AMD Big Navi GPUs, this is gonna apply to you even more. These newer GPUs, GPUs are putting out an incredible amount of power and in the same token that means an incredible amount of heat as well as fans ramping up with a lot of noise but even if you have something like from the 20 series or a 10 series like a 1060 or 1080 Ti a lot of these same topics that we're talking about today can also be applied to those GPUs and you should be able to cool them off without a problem so we're going to tackle three different things first is going to be air cooling GPUs with the stock cooler what could you possibly do to improve temperatures. We're going to talk about a little bit of undervolting as well as optimizing your case for proper airflow. Second, we're going to talk about hybrid coolers. These are GPUs that actually have almost an AIO liquid cooler attached to them and they'll attach to something like a 240 millimeter AIO and they almost act like a closed loop cooling system much like you would have an AIO for your CPU. And then finally we're going to talk about water cooling your GPU. We'll touch on some concerns that people may have about water cooling as well as the type of gains and performance to expect. And to keep the results as consistent as possible that I did with my own testing, I'm going to talk about mainly one GPU. That's going to be the EVGA 4013-3090. Now, I initially ran this GPU with its stock cooler. Then I slapped on a hybrid cooler. And then finally, I did water cooling on this GPU. So we're going to use this as a reference. This is one of the hottest running GPUs with a BIOS that can go up to 500 watts with its power. So this is definitely going to be an extreme case. Anything less than this you should be able to cool a lot easier so first let's tackle the issue of the air cooler now a few years ago most air coolers especially the triple fan designs mostly would keep the gpus nice and cool and the noise wouldn't really be that bad but with the rtx 3000 series especially something like this evga 3090 i was really surprised that even when you're playing a game like cyberpunk the temperatures were getting very very toasty maybe 78 celsius to 80 celsius not to mention the v VRAM temperatures were really skyrocketing well above 100C. So if you want to maintain the stock cooler that your GPU came with, but improve performance significantly, what can you do without having to modify the GPU? The number one thing that you can do is to ensure that you have a high airflow case. The GPUs, especially these big GPUs with the triple slot coolers, they love when they get nice cool air from not only the front of the case, but also the bottom of the case. Some cases, such as the Lee and Lee Dynamic, while it may have a glass on the front, you do have a nice layout right below the GPU where you can install three fans and therefore getting that air right to the GPU. I did a build with this EVGA 3090 in the Lee and Lee Dynamic Mini, so it's not a huge case by any means, but we have fresh air right from the bottom sort of targeting the GPU fans. That really helps to lower temperatures by a significant amount, and that means that the fans on your GPU are going to run a lot cooler, and because everything's running nice and cool, your GPU is also going to hit high your boost clocks it's going to be a lot less likely to thermal throttle so i definitely think whatever case you have if you can have not only fans on the front but on the bottom specifically targeting your gpu i think you're going to see significant changes in temperatures and you don't even have to alter anything with the gpu at all just run it stock but point these fans at it and it's going to be definitely fantastic and don't forget to have proper exhaust fans i always like to have one in the rear of the case because all that hot air coming off the gpu these modern gpus like the rt x 3090 even something like a 3070 or 3080 they absolutely just spew a huge amount of hot air into your case that's why in these builds as well i like having an aio traditionally air cooling can be pretty good if you have like a noxua or be quiet cooler but i've put something like that within the case with a 3090 and pretty soon your cpu is also going to be heat soaked just because these gpus are just producing a tremendous amount of heat and all that heat is going through the case and it's going to go right through your cpu in this 
case here in the Lee and Lee Dynamic Mini, I put the AIO on the side panel. So that means that the CPU is bringing in fresh cool air in the case. And typically the CPU, especially if you're gaming, like even with Cyberpunk or something like that, it's going to get a little warm, but it's not going to get crazy warm where it's really going to affect the temperatures of your GPU too much, especially if it's coming in through the side. And then you have the top of the case as an additional exhaust. Don't forget that it's not only your GPU core temperature that you're worried about, especially with these newer GPUs. In a lot of cases with something powerful like a 3080 or 3090, the VRAM temperature, which is actually going to be on the back of the GPU, is pretty important. In a lot of cases, there are a lot of reports of fans on these GPUs just going crazy and spinning up, even when their core temperature is really cool, like 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. That's because the VRAM is reaching temperatures as high as 110 Celsius. We know now that you can use something like HW Info. They just released an update where you can see the junction temperature temperature of VRAM. Previously, Igor Labs and some other outlets did some research and we knew VRAM was running pretty hot, but it's only been recently that we can actually monitor these temperatures and definitely it can thermal throttle, it can cause a lot of issues if the application or game that you're using is really, really reliant on VRAM. Even some games with really intense ray tracing like Cyberpunk, you will definitely heat that VRAM up. And of course, one of the more taxing things you can do is people that are using these GPUs to mine cryptocurrency like ETH. TH, that's certainly going to heat up the VRAM a considerable amount. Some people have gone as far as to remove their backplate and add new fresh thermal pads. So some people have seen a pretty nice improvement in simply switching out these thermal pads. So that's certainly something else that you can do. Of course, it's going to depend on what you're doing. For most regular games, you may not really notice a difference. But like I said, if what you're doing is either like mining or RTX intensive games like Cyberpunk, you may definitely notice some better thermals on your VRAM, which is generally going to equate to cooler and more silent performance. Of course, ramping up the fans on the GPU itself will always help your temperatures go down, but of course that's going to come at the cost of more noise. Something that you can do is perhaps undervolt your GPU. There are a couple of very good guides online. For example, Optimum Tech did a nice guide on undervolting your GPU. You basically go and you lower the boost clock a little bit and you go to a certain voltage like 850 volts and maybe 850 megahertz for the boost clock. And in general, you don't lose too much performance, but you're going to save a lot of power and a lot of heat. Typically, you can shave off a couple of degrees by undervolting your GPU without really losing a lot of power. If you have a mini ITX or a very small case where perhaps high airflow is not going to be possible, this certainly is going to be something that you can also examine just to try to keep your thermals and your noise down without having to modify anything else in terms of the hardware of your GPU. So next, let's say if you want to get a little bit more advanced, you could consider a hybrid cooler. Now, some GPUs come with this out of the factory. For example, EVGA has a 4 to 3 version that comes with a hybrid cooler, as well as a couple of other models for their 3080s and 3090s. You can also find Asus that has these, you know, Gigabyte. In my case, I use the same EVGA 3090, and I actually bought from EVGA a hybrid kit where you can take apart the block and put this hybrid cooler on it. Let me tell you guys some of my thoughts. First, the temperatures definitely went down by an average of 10 degrees Celsius. So if I was hitting 77 or 78 C in a game like Cyberpunk, in the same operating conditions, I would hit maybe 67 to 68 Celsius without changing anything else. So it definitely on average 10 to 12 degrees Celsius, I would say, depending on what you're doing. So that's definitely a pretty nice reduction in temperature. And of course, you will also be able to run your fan slower. Now, it is a little bit different setup than a stock cooler. You do have one fan on this particular hybrid GPU, but the AIO will also have two fans that acts pretty much like a CPU AIO. The only caveat here in terms of noise, I found the EVGA hybrid cooler. The pump was a little bit noisy and you can't really control the pump without doing some type of modification. So out of the box stock, you can't really control the pump speed and it's not too bad, but you can certainly hear the pump. So for me, I kind of defeated the purpose a little bit of having something that's going to be perhaps running cool cooler, but it wasn't significantly quieter than just having sort of the stock GPU with a little bit louder fans. 
And of course, the GPU core, like I mentioned, went down by about 10 degrees Celsius. The VRAM temperature also went down by a similar amount, maybe five to 10 degrees Celsius. So if before it would get a little bit over 100 C, sometimes as much as 110 Celsius, if you're doing something very intensive with the VRAM, now generally it would stay below 100 Celsius, which is good because then you're gonna be a lot further away from thermal throttling. Now, I don't know if the cause of this is maybe the hybrid cooler just making the GPU cooler in general, or if perhaps, you know when you do the hybrid cooler you do have to put new thermal pads on the back maybe that helped as well so i'm a little bit split on the hybrid gpu now you do get the better performance versus just air cooling and in some cases if you ignore the pump noise it can be a little bit quieter but I did find that having sort of to add an AIO into your case not only restricts the type of case that you can use, because remember, you still have to cool your CPU. That may have an AIO as well. It just looks a little bit messy when you have maybe two AIOs in the case and the cable management's a little bit trickier because then you have two fans on the AIO itself. So I thought it was a little bit of a clunky approach and I didn't particularly like the design of sort of the, the hybrid block that goes on the GPU. Finally, let's talk about my favorite and the ultimate way to get these GPU temperatures and performance under control, and that's gonna be water cooling. Right off the bat, I know a lot of people are scared of water cooling, that there can be mishaps that happen, sometimes there'll be leaks, even experienced builders, you know, I've had things go wrong too, where something will, will come off or something like that. So you definitely have to have a passion for the water cooling. It's not just about the price to performance and to get, you know, the best performance possible, which you will get with a properly done water cooled setup. It's about the journey of building in your PC, the satisfaction of building something next level, as well as sort of chasing these numbers. You do get to see some pretty ridiculously cool numbers when you're working with water cooling. Of course, there are the budget aspects. It's going to be a lot more expensive than the hybrid cooler or even just leaving your GPU stock and getting more case fans. But at the end of the day, if you're an enthusiast, you're going to know if you want to tackle it or not. And as long as you're careful, you take precautions. There are many ways to pressure test your loop and everything like that to make sure you don't have any leaks. Leaks. A lot of people have successfully done water-cooled setups. It's something you're going to have to sort of learn from experience. For me, it's the ultimate expression of your gaming PC, and not only the aesthetics, it looks absolutely unbelievable, but also in the absolutely bonkers performance that you get. So let's talk a little bit about that performance. So I picked up the EK water block for the 3090 for the One 3, as well as the nickel backplate. Looks really, really awesome. So I went, I got the hybrid cooler off of the PCB of the 3090. 90 and I slapped on this water block. Of course, I put this in my case labs build. I do have a tremendous amount of radiators here, probably a little bit overkill, but my CPU is a 5950X. I have a 560 radiator on the bottom, 360 on the front, as well as a 480 on the top. So certainly a lot of overkill and I think something like 16 to 18 fans. I'm using these awesome EKD RGB fans. They perform really well and look really great as well. So in the system like this, you put on a water block, you go through that trouble sometimes it can take you know maybe two three hours depending on your experience to properly mount a water block what type of temperatures will you get well in this particular system remember air cooled i was getting 78 c sometimes it would go over 80 degrees celsius depending on the game in this system running the same games and applications it rarely goes above 43 to 44 degrees celsius and if you take a look at all the fans in the system you would think oh that must be a noisy system but the absolute opposite it is true this system is pretty much the most silent system that you can build because you can run all these fans at extremely low rpms and it's going to keep that gpu very very cool just because you have so many radiators even if you do less radiators than this as my case is a little bit overkill you're still going to get a lot cooler performance and of course once again i added thermal pads to the back and this has a nickel back plate so the thermal properties of the vram improved once again now i typically will see somewhere from like 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big improvement over the VRAM, reaching almost 110 degrees of the junction temperature when it was previously just an air cooled GPU. So, as you can see, when you water cool it, even in a smaller setup, the gains that you get are definitely worth it. Of course, there are added expenses. You got to get a water block fittings and tubing and radiators. So, you do have to be an enthusiast for water cooling. This definitely isn't for everyone or people that are more concerned with the absolute best value that they're going to get. But keep in mind, if you do do a 
proper job of water cooling your GPU, it's going to be the best performance that you're going to be able to see. And aesthetically, there really is nothing better than a fully water cooled system like this. It just looks absolutely great. And it's definitely a guaranteed way to lower these GPU temperatures. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck out there working on your GPU thermals, especially if you have one of the newer GPUs. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.